Hey guys, what's up? My name is Lauren Danielle. If this is the first time you're seeing my face, welcome to my channel. I wanted to make this video a really chill video, hence the reason I'm still in my PGs. I just threw a cardigan on and we have barely any makeup on. This is honestly the new mom look and I'm really just going to kick back my feet and just want to talk to you guys about my labor and delivery story for my second baby number two, which I just had her um, almost two weeks ago. Two, it'll make Saturday will make two weeks and today's Thursday. Um, so I guess we can start from the very beginning, and that's actually a week before I had her. So Friday night, me and Mason, a week before I had her, me and Mason were going to go on a little date night. We are going to go to the movies and whatnot. And as we were getting Blakelyn and just ready to walk out the door to drop Blakelyn off, I started having some really, really bad contractions to the point where I was like kind of leaning over and hunching in pain. And I was... I'm usually, I am a person that I'm actually pretty good with pain, um, and I was like, this is not normal, I should not be in this much pain if I'm not in labor. Sorry guys, I had to like reposition things, I wasn't like kind of how it was looking, but I'm actually a person that I was just really noticing that this is not normal, I should not be in this much pain, so I thought, um, and just thought I was in labor, hurry up and threw the bags in the um, car. We dropped Blakelyn off and called my midwife and she said, since they are that far apart and you're sounding like you're in pain when you're on the phone with me, let's go ahead and meet at the hospital. Since I wasn't considered full term, she couldn't check me at the birthing center because if I was to have went into labor then, I was 36 weeks and 5 days. So one more day and I would have made the 37 mark and I could have went there. But since I was that one day early, I wouldn't have been able to have a birth the birthing center. So she said to meet her at the hospital. So I met her at the hospital, and um, they hooked me up to the monitors. They contract. They were tracking my contractions. They were pretty strong. They were pretty frequent. Um, but I was only one centimeter dilated. So she recommended that I get discharged and try to go home and wait out my contractions at home until hopefully at 12 o'clock midnight I would be considered 37 weeks and if I made it that long I could go to the birthing center. So we came home and long story short I laid in bed and my contractions went away. Now they started back up the next day and the next day and the next day. So for seven straight days I had I was in early labor uh, meaning I wasn't really dilating my body wasn't doing anything other than having contractions and getting my uterus prepared for the real thing. Um, so skip forward to a week later, Friday night of the next week, I was supposed to go to a women's conference group at my church, just like a women's night out. And it was actually in Baton Rouge. So that's about 45 minutes away from where I live. So got in the car, drove all the way to Baton Rouge. And just the whole time I was driving, I was listening to worship music, and I just wasn't really feeling peace about going, which is super weird. I planned, I had like this cute outfit on. I just wasn't really feeling peace. I wasn't in pain. I wasn't having contractions. I was a little uncomfortable sitting up in a seat, which I've been feeling for weeks. But something, I just did not have peace about going to this group. It just, something, I didn't have anxiety. It just, again, it just wasn't peace about going to this group. So I ended up driving home. And the group, like I said, it's 45 minutes away. It was going to be a long time. I would have actually been there. So thank goodness I listened to that gut feeling. And that I really just think it was God telling me, girl, you need to go home, be with your husband. Um, so I, I turned all the way around. Once I was in Baton Rouge, it was totally off the wall crazy that I drove all the way there, turned back around, and went and picked Blakelyn up for my aunt who was watching her. And me and Blakelyn watched a movie. And I took a bath and I went to bed. And at 12 o'clock, Mason had actually stayed up and he was like doing his fantasy football and like doing some things for him just didn't want to go to bed. So at 12 o'clock, he actually came to lay in bed and he woke me up and we were just kind of talking about some things and he touched my belly and he was like, wow, you actually are getting really big. And I kid you not, it was like clockwork. As soon as he said that, my water broke. It gushed all over the bed and I was like, oh my god my water just broke and he kind of lay there like yeah right like I would just say that in your water break he, he just thought I was like picking and I was like no Mason my water really did break got up and as I'm running to the bathroom more is like coming out 
and I called my midwife immediately. I wasn't having contractions right then, but I did immediately call my midwife and I told her my water broke. And she said, okay, go ahead and put a pad on to make sure it's actually coming out, which at that point I knew it was actually coming out. Um, but I did go ahead and do that so it didn't go everywhere. Um, so I, and she said to at least stay at home for the next hour or so. You're not in risk for an infection. And since the last time I checked you, you were only at a one. Um, go ahead and stay at home for an hour or so or until your two, your contractions are two minutes apart. Like I said, right then when I called her right away, they weren't, I wasn't having contractions. So I told Mason to like try to get some rest and I was gonna pack some things for Blakeland and just, I wanted to do some things around the house. And as soon as I started moving around, my contractions started immediately and they were never like I had five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, my contractions were already at two minutes. So I timed them for about 30 minutes and they were two minutes apart consistently. So I called my midwife and she was like, oh yeah, you need to come on come on in. And I called my mom and told her that I was about to be dropping Blakeland off. So we got in the car from dropping Blakeland off and then we had to, I needed gas. My car needed gas. It was on E literally the whole time because there's no, of course, there was no 24 hour gas station on the way there for like 20 miles. Um, or what felt like it. So I was low-key freaking out on the way there. Mason just like, calm down, calm down. And of course, he has to take his time, go in there, get some snacks. I was about ready to kill him by the time he got in the car and we were on our way to the birthing center. But lo and behold, we made it to the birthing center around 3 o'clock. And she checked me and I was at a 4. So I was definitely in that active labor time period span. So she told me to go ahead and walk the halls for like an hour and we'll check you again and see where you're at. So I did that. I walked the halls from 3 to 4. And by the time, and oh, I just want to say, whenever I was walking and doing that consistent exercise, my contractions were starting to get stronger. Um, during them, I definitely couldn't talk. I was having to lean over and put my hands on the walls and like push against and um, that really helped me, that pressure. And then also Mason was walking with me the whole time. And he grabbed my hips during my contractions and just kind of squeezed them together. And that definitely helped so, so, so much. Um, that just pressure being my hips being squeezed together while I was contracting helped a lot. Um, so he was doing that for me. We walked for an hour and just that same thing. Every time I have a contraction, he'd help and I'd push against the wall. And then at 4 o'clock, I got checked again, and I was at a 6. So once I was at a 6, that was her telling me that I was able to get in the water if I wanted to. And I undressed like that. I was in the water in 5 minutes. And I can't tell you how my contractions felt for, versus me walking around and me in the bathtub, how much easier they got on my body, how much lighter my body felt. She actually said comparing um, my the baby's heart rate to whenever I was walking around to when I was in the water, that her heart rate had went down. So the baby, Blake, I mean, Rowan was actually really loving that water. Um, so honestly, from six to 10 centimeters, I got in the water around four and I had her at 6.42 a.m. So I was actually expecting my contractions to get worse and worse. I kept thinking I'm definitely not at 10 centimeters. Like there's no way they're not that bad. Um, and I, yeah, I just expected them to get worse and worse. And um, around like probably 620, she asked me, she was like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling any pressure down there? And since I didn't feel that pressure with Blakeland because I had the epidural, I didn't really know what that felt like. And I just kind of in my head, you think pressure, I you think like the baby moving down in your vagina. This is going to be a TMI video, guys. Just want to throw that out of there. I'm going to be saying a lot of bodily function words. Um, so I just kept thinking that that pressure I was going to feel in my vagina. And I never felt it. Like I never, I just kept telling her no, no. 
And then she was like, well, it's actually going to feel like you need to push, like you need to go to the bathroom. And I was like, well, I've been feeling that for like 15 minutes now. She was like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. And right whenever we had that conversation, I was like, whoa, like I, I need to push. This is what, it, this is what it is. I need to push. And like I said, I, I never felt it like in that area, it was all, it felt like I needed to take the biggest poo of my life. Literally, that's what it felt like. So, I tried a couple of different positions out in the in the tub. I ended up being the most comfortable with my back towards it. Um, so, I just started to push. Mason asked me if I wanted him to get in the tub with me now. And that was one of those things we planned for. He had his swim trunks and I just didn't realize that in the moment I just do not want nobody touching me I didn't want him in the bathtub I just kind of really needed to do it all by myself and my midwife was like trying to like comfort me and rub my arm and I even with her I was like please get off of me I'm definitely a person when I'm in pain that I want to be alone and want to deal with it by myself um it was definitely a mind over matter thing and I was all in my head thinking I can do this and just pep talking myself in my head and just didn't want anybody else to touch me or be a part of that. That's just kind of how it happened. Um, I would I wish I would have got some killer pictures with Mason in the water but like in that moment I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was doing it by myself and that's how it needed to be. Um, so yeah I started to push and that's when remember Miss Marsha my midwife was definitely having to coach me through it since I didn't um, feel that way with Blakeland I didn't feel that pressure Sue was actually telling me how to push because you think push like just push your body just knows how to push but um, I just didn't I didn't know how to push properly more not properly I didn't know how to push effectively so my midwife was having to coach me through having how to push effectively and that's not through your mouth that's keeping your mouth closed and basically like pushing the biggest poo out of your life I'm telling you I'm, I'm telling you that's what it felt like I did not feel anything like the ring of fire that they talk about it's not as bad as it like you think whenever you think of childbirth and this ring of fire that this baby's come out of your it's not like that bad at all so lo and behold I pushed for around five to ten minutes she came out she was plopped straight on my chest and that is a moment that I will cherish forever um that's just an indescribable moment that I just I will always remember looking down and looking at her looking in her eyes and I think I, I think the first thing I said was, oh my gosh, she's so little. Because I was just expecting her to be so much bigger than Blake and she wasn't. But um, that just moment, I will, nobody can ever take away from me. And nobody can ever take away that sense of accomplishment that um, that just natural childbirth and, and doing it non-medicated gave me. Um, it just gave me so much, it, it made me feel so empowered as a woman and um I definitely want to sit here and encourage anybody right now that if any woman is thinking about it but thinks, oh, they can't do it, I'm telling you, you are, you're made for it. Your body is is literally made and created to do this thing. Your your brain is capable of it. It's definitely all in your brain. It's mind over matter. Um, so I just definitely encourage any woman that is out there thinking they can't do it, message me. I'm encouraging you. I'm telling you, you can do it. Um, so if y'all have any questions, definitely head over to my Instagram. It's always linked down below and ask me those questions. But, um, yeah, like I said, Black Lemon, I mean, Rowan, I need, I'm still not used to those name things. Rowan was born at 6.42 a.m., so my total labor was around 6 hours, so nothing at all compared to my 21-hour labor with Blakeland. Um, but, again, I was given Pitocin and all that jazz. But, little babe, I woke up hungry to eat. But that is pretty much my labor and delivery story. Short, simple, and sweet since it was only six hours. Um, I'm so grateful for that experience. I'm so grateful that it happened the way I, um, pretty much the way I wanted it to. I couldn't have asked it to go on any better. Um, we are so blessed. She's so sweet. And um, yeah, guys. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. And definitely stick around for more labor and delivery stories. Um, or related videos and just me becoming a mom of two. It's going to be a journey and I'm so excited to take you guys along with me. But until next time, bye.